Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Invincible Podcast. We have a fun show today. We're going to be talking with Damien Chevalier from Ubisoft Barcelona Mobile. Um, he is the game director on Invincible Guarding the Globe. Welcome to the show, Damien. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for, for having me. I'm very happy to be here. And it's great uh, to chat with you again. We actually chatted with you for the first time on the show floor at San Diego Comic-Con last year where you guys were yes. teasing the game. We had found out about the game like hours before the actual show. And so it was cool to be there and like be able to pick up this game and play the demo of it at the show, which was really, really cool. Hey, it was great, and I love to uh, I love to see you play. It was super cool to get some feedback as well, you know, like live feedback. So that was that's always amazing for us, obviously. Yeah. So uh, TJ, are you talking? Sorry, I was muted. I remember <laughs> playing at San Diego Comic Con, and Wyatt was to my right, and I played. And I think we started with like for the demo, we started with duplicate, and then once mm -hmm. like you got through duplicate, you got Rex Blood, and I was just I turned to, to Wyatt because Rex Blood is my favorite character, and I was like nice. freaking out. Like, I'm playing a video game with Rex Blood in it. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the moment that I knew that we were all gonna end up getting obsessed with this game. Was TJ just being like, oh, oh, Rex Blood, <laughs> like getting all excited seeing him in the game? Yeah, it was great. Amazing, amazing. So we got a lot of talk to, to talk about some of the new features that are just coming out with the game and some new updates and changes. Um, but before we get into that and some more about Invincible, we want to talk a little bit about what you do uh, as the game director. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, basically, so yeah, my role is to, uh, to define the vision of the game. So in the case of Invincible guarding the globe, uh, I need to make sure that we respect uh, Invincible. You know, it's a strong brand. It has like a strong law and background. So with the team, you know, uh, I'm here uh, to make sure that whenever we implement something in the game, a new character, a new game mode, that it makes sense for the universe. Uh, and then on the day to day, uh, while we're implementing and building the game, I'm also here again to ensure that the quality of the game is here, that the, the experience is fun, that we're building something that, that is consistent. Yeah. So, so it's very interesting job, and it's great to work on, on with a with a, a brand like that. Yeah. How did it uh, come about? Like, how did the the early days of the the game come about with it being an invincible game and designing things? And I know some uh, fans of the comic book recognize early on that even some of the character designs were a little mm -hmm. bit different from what they yeah. from what fans of the show might know. Yeah. So very early on, when we started to to talk with Skybound, uh, we wanted to have our own art style, you know. So obviously. Uh, a bit different from uh, f from the show because it, it's a game, it's in 3D. So the invincible characters, they were never modelized in, in 3D, you know? So you have to adapt a bit. Yeah. So that's that's the tricky part. But it's very interesting. So we managed to have our own s visual style, let's say, while respecting uh, uh, the original uh, material. And that, that was a challenge, but a, a very interesting one. Yeah. Yeah, that is really cool to think about that, that invincible for the first time in like 3d 3d models of these characters was really mm -hmm. you guys doing this i can't think of another time where these characters were adapted in that way because it always has been you know animation yeah. um, so it's it's cool that you guys kind of got sort of the the first pass at that since i'm sure invincible continues to blow up and they've you know announced plans for more video games and things like that mm -hmm. it's exciting that you guys got sort of the the first take on that and i know obviously the with you guys making the game and the and having to sort of design a story for the game whereas mm -hmm. the comic is one set story the show is one mm -hmm. set story what was that challenge like trying to figure out a way to to make a story work that kind of still respects the show and the comic and all that yeah that's that's another challenge at first uh, obviously like the comic is a strong reference point for us so uh, you know like that's how we learned about the the, the whole universe uh, but yeah, we, we we're not sure, like, are we going to follow the comic book? Are we going to follow the show? And very quickly, we agreed to follow the timeline of the show. Because uh, obviously, we have our own storyline, but it's happening on the side of the show. Uh, so we don't want to spoil players, you know, like, that's why one of the general rules that we have is that the, the heroes, the characters that we're going to see in the game, that's because you already saw them uh, in the show. There might be some exceptions, but that's the rule that we have. Uh, and so, yeah, for us from the beginning, it made more sense, you know, like the show right now, it's the thing that is more like, uh, uh, up to date, uh, up to date, you know, like the, the, the thing that is going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that, that made, that made a lot of sense for us. Yeah. It feels like we're pretty 
we've got a pretty good grasp on season one. It doesn't feel like we've really dipped our toe into season two characters yet. Some of the new characters mm -hmm. introduced in season two. And there's still a handful of season one, you know, smaller characters and, you know, villains yes. and things here and there, which is pretty exciting. You guys have a pretty wide pool to pull from, you know, without even getting into season two yet. So do, is, are, are there plans to essentially adapt anyone and everyone that has appeared in the show at this point? So the thing is that we've released the game uh, between season one and season two. So, so basically that was tricky, you know, to try to be on time on the same page at the same time. So that's some, something that we want to try to get better at. So like when season three uh, releases, we're going to try to release characters that appear in season three. That's so cool. that, that, that's the idea. So right now that's the great thing as well with Invincible. There are so many characters. And obviously, we can't release them as fast, you know. Oh. <laughs> it takes it, it, so, it takes it yeah. takes time. If, no. Yeah, if, if you're if you're releasing like in conjunction with the show and the seasons as they come out, obviously it takes some time to do character models and designs and and their their powers and all that stuff. Do you have early access to? Like the seasons before I mean, they release. I knew that was going right. to be the question. <laughs> I knew. I that mean, was just let him answer question. the question, Ryan. Just we always have to get scoops, don't we? <laughs> That's a trap question here. That is. That is. <laughs> that you do not need to an answer. I mean, Bill, if they're releasing a character the same time the show's going live, I mean, well, can I just and, have him say it? No, that's all. <laughs> it could be a scoop. It's not a scoop if we like are like, well, now come on. Well, you don't have to answer that question. I mean, you, okay. you, you did Let's tell us it. that you actually read the comic, though, right? Of course, yeah. Of so, course, I mean, you do have some knowledge of what's coming based on the comic. Yeah. And yes. as, as a comic reader, you know that season three has some very exciting things coming. Um, very, so that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one. They are like some very yeah. cool characters to come. I can't wait to see them in the game. Oh, I yeah. To design them. As a fan of the comic, is there someone that you're excited to see? in a future release of characters that hasn't been that hasn't been now this isn't mm -hmm. saying that they're going to i'm just yeah. saying as a fan of the yeah, comic, yeah. who are you excited yeah, to see? yeah uh very excited about thrag i'm not sure i oh. say it correctly with the accent oh, yeah, yeah yep. thrag. that's right very excited very excited about this one. Oh uh, yeah it's so powerful so charismatic uh i can't i can't wait to have my team to be honest yeah uh, that's a great one yeah awesome. uh dino as well i mean dinosaurs Yes! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't just, even baited to say that. Awesome. <laughs> I just love, I mean, I love dinosaurs in general, but it's so cool. In the comic, it's amazing. Oh, man. Like this, I hope we get He just became dinosaurs. Bill's best friend. Bill loves Bro, he's dinosaurs. My, he is my favorite. <laughs> he is my favorite. Nice. I really yeah, hope we're uh, at... Go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. No, go ahead, Ryan. No, I was just going to say, I really hope Powerplex ends up in season three so that he could find his mm -hmm. way into the game, too, because that would be a great character for the game. It is. It is definitely. So, uh, I wanted to bring up the global launch and everything, and how mm -hmm. you know there was a, a pretty long soft launch, and yeah. you know, and and how did that change, and how did that affect the game, and how you know what happened during that time before we got to play, and before it was a global launch, because that was that was that was I can't say tough because you know whatever, but it was like oh man, it's. It's almost here. It's almost here. There are people playing it in the Philippines. There's people playing it in Australia, and we can't play it yet. And so, um, but that time is important, right, for getting yeah. the game finished yeah, in a. Yeah, extremely important for us. That's really the moment where you know you release an early version and you get early feedback from mm -hmm. players. That are, that are very valuable for us because we want to know if what we did, uh, if they're gonna like this, you know, uh, and then an. Very important part is like the balancing. Uh, it's very hard and it's complex. There's many characters, many abilities. So you want to make sure that it feels fair for players, you know, that they're, they're not going to get smashed and crashed. So that's the, the moment where you, you collect a lot of data and you tweak it, you know, you tweak a bit here, you make this character a bit powerful. Like I can take the example of Omni-Man right away. We had lots of negative feedback, like doesn't feel like Omni-Man. It's not powerful. Really? Anymore. That's something you can miss. You can miss easily, you know, when we join the developer game. So we increase the stat. We change the ability. So now the ability is like this big clap, and it used to be like just a strong right. punch. Yeah. So it needed to look and feel powerful. So this is the moment where you get those info, those feedback. Obviously, you add more content as well. You add more heroes. So so that's that's yeah, that's crucial for us. Very important. Yeah. 
And when talking about Omni Man and doing that clap, that's a move he does in the show and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about because when you were when you were talking about what you do as game director, the most exciting thing for me was like you are the one that makes sure it feels like the right character. Like this is a character that feels like it should. That's one of the most exciting things to me is getting to pick these moves and like the way Isotope stands there with his hands and teleports mm-hmm. somebody. Like they mm-hmm. all look. I mean, the way Aquarius attacks, like. I feel like everybody is kind of moving and, you know, acting the way they should. Can you talk more about what it's like to create a character from the show or use influence from the comic to make them feel right? And if you want to use a certain character as an example, that's somebody Mm -hmm. that's already been released or something. Um, Yeah. Just tell us more about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not, that's not an easy task. It's a very fun task. I love it. Uh, but yeah, basically the great thing is that since again, since we, we're following the timeline of the show, we already have a lot of reference, you know, uh, lots of references from the show. So we know how the character acts. We already have like great animation reference, even VFX, like visual effects. So that's great for us. So basically the first thing that we do is that obviously we talk with Skybound and uh, the first batch of heroes that we wanted to release, we wanted to make sure that the fan favorites were there, you know, it's very important. Uh, so, and then at the same time, we have a narrative in, in the game. Uh, we need to take into account the balancing. So when we release a new hero, we need to make sure, okay, we have four factions, you know, so like, do we have enough of this type of faction? Do we have enough of this type? So this is something that you need to take into account as well. Uh, and then when it comes to create the hero, once we finally know, okay, we have enough of these characters, we have enough, oh, enough of these ones. Uh, yes, we look at the show, we look at all the references we have. Uh, what's the coolest thing that it does in the show? Because, you know, we, they have a limited amount of abilities and they do a lot of things. So, okay, Omni-Man, like I said, like this big clap, that's very uh, an obvious one. It's very visual. It feels powerful. So that's something, okay, let's go for that. Uh, Robot, for example, same. Like you see him in early season one when he, he fires the rockets, you know, when they fight against the flag sands. You say, this is cool. This looks different than the others. Very visual. Let's do it. So it's a lot of back and forth like that. We talk a lot with Skybound, we get some feedback. Uh, together we agree as well, you know, on like the approach that we want to have for each character. And yes, we really want players to connect the game to the show. So when they play, it's like, oh man, I saw that in the show. And that's that's the great feeling. Mm-hmm. But as fans well, I- too, like we were so excited with Battle Beast. Like he has some yeah. he has some abilities that reference who he is as a character that people from the show might not know. Like, yeah, yeah, there's there's some yeah. comic book references hidden in there in of some course. places, which is very, very cool and shows that you guys are fans and are, you mm-hmm. know, paying attention to these things. Yeah, yeah. All the names, the names of the abilities, you know, they, they, they mean something. They are directly connected to the to the character itself. So that's very important. It's I'm a, curious. It's, about, it's, a, it's a lot of details. I'm Sorry, curious yeah. about your uh, your team, How about how many people uh, are like typically work on this um on the app as a, as a as a whole like like uh designing and uh and going into the the fighting and all that different stuff new events so um, the whole game you mean yeah like how, about how many people do you think are, are are working on the on this game at a time it's it's about 40 people so we have wow, different 40? Team. yeah yeah it's uh wow. it's it, it's a lot of work to try uh, yeah. to, to 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 make this game happen yeah. And so we divided in several teams. So we have the design team. So they're really the ones, you know, thinking about how are we going to make this game fun? You know, like what type of mechanics you can have, what kind of game modes. Then the programmers are here to make it happen, to implement the whole thing. And then the artist is here to make it look good, you know, to, yeah. to, to create the characters, the locations. Uh, and obviously we have also like what we call the quality control. And they're here to make sure that the game is actually fun, that it's working as expected. So it's a lot of people working uh, in the same direction and so that's that's where uh, my role is important to make sure that they are all on the same page that we're all working with the same goal so well i mean if it's any um if it makes you feel any better about like you know keeping this team and their families fed i have paid for their salaries probably (laughs) four times over again it's well, embarrassing much I've spent, but not really. I'm proud of it. So, thanks. Very great. Very grateful. It's obviously yeah. You, you're putting food on the table, right? Now. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I will say that this game has been like probably, and I'm I may not be exaggerating here, 
probably the most constant thing in my life over the past two months. Like it <laughs> is before I go to bed, when I wake up in the morning, in the middle of the day, throughout work, when I get home, I'm constantly checking the app. I'm constantly updating my uh, my GDA um, like missions and just uh, constantly looking at the shop to see if, if what I need is in there and just mm -hmm. what I can do to, to, up, uh, to better my people. And yeah. It is just a, a great um, uh, micromanage game. You know what I mean? Like I'm very type A. I yeah. love to like organize and keep things like figured out and like, you know, get into the minutia of it. And there is a lot of fun to that. And we were talking about the characters and the feel of Invincible, Invincible and it has all of that, but that doesn't last long if there isn't things to do. And that like, mm -hmm. so that is very much about the events and everything and what you guys are adding to the game every week. And so like not there aren't many days that go by without something happening and uh, you know, there being a new event or there being this new thing that or a new change or an update or a character, what goes into making these events and coming up with them and spacing them out and desi deciding what, 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 and when, when it comes to all mm -hmm. the events. Yeah. That's, that's the whole point of the events is to, you know, like we want when players, they connect to the game. Uh, we want them, you know, to, to interact with something new. We want uh, the game to, to feel fresh for them, to have like new new things to do. Uh, so that's the that's the whole point. So it's still a bit limited right now. You know, it's a lot about like, hey, we are releasing a new hero. Uh, we are there's like this new GDA up available with this type of enemies, or you can get this type of rewards. So we're trying, you know, to to give more 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 variety to the game, basically. Uh, so that that's very important that we have uh, what we call the live ops team that is working on this and they like they brainstorm like cons constantly basically and we, we we sit down together and we try okay what could we do you know to try to this to make the game feel like, like fresh so you connect to the game it's like some, something new happening uh, that's very important obviously for engagements we want players to be able to engage uh, uh, with the game uh, I, I tend to call this the game some kind of a company companion app you know so yeah. you have the comic you have the show. And then now you have the game as well. So while you're waiting for a new episode, a new season, you can get some more more of Invincible by playing the game. And the thing is that that's the thing on a weekly basis. We release new events, we release new updates regularly, more content. So the game is going to grow. You're going to you're going to see more of Invincible. You're going to be able to do more things. So yeah, that so recruitment, the recruitment event yeah, a that happened week, a few weeks ago. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was off the chain. I was like sweating. I was playing so much. Yeah. And like all all the like the communication like with fans of the game and stuff. I don't know if you saw, but so people that don't know, I'm sure you know if you listen to our podcast, we have a really fun had a really fun collaboration with with you guys. Mm -hmm. Um and some of the comments that people were leaving on YouTube, one that stuck out to me, I don't know if you guys had read them, was uh they got into the show by playing the game yeah they had played yes, the well, game yeah. first yes, and well. then we're like oh yeah this show's pretty cool based off of this game <laughs> yeah that's very nice cool. uh, yeah never would have cool. imagined that that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah um so no we were just talking about uh events and i was going to ask about oh no you were talking about that recruitment uh, event, which mm -hmm. was, that was a really, really great event. Not only was it double elites coming up, but then like basically getting rewarded for refreshing, like, and that went really yeah. hand in hand and it felt very satisfying and, and finding that balance between like balancing it and making sure it's not too, you know, over, over, not overpowered, but, but mm -hmm. finding that balance between it being satisfying and fun and rewarding, like that's a, that's a tough line to, to, to tow without just giving everything away either because there has yeah. to be something to play for and something to move forward towards um but no the events have been great and so are there are there a lot of events in mind that are in development that you know you guys still have ideas for or can we can you say we you know have we seen most of what the events are going to be no 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 it's just uh it's the first layer we have yeah we have plenty of ideas obviously like everything it takes time you know to implement and develop but uh, we have like those cool events that we that we testing. Uh, we call the hardcore events. You know, it's like it's a very very hard uh, GDA up. You know, that is live, and you have you have to fight. We had one with Battle Beast. Uh, we had one with Alien the Alien. We're trying things, you know, because you can play around with all these characters. Yeah. Uh, and something new as well that is very important that uh, that that we just tested is the community events. So we really want to involve a bit more the the community. So. They are creating basically uh, uh, the event, so it's like we we 
they have like they can choose between option a option b what type of enemies do you want what type of rewards where do you want this mm. fight to happen so this is something that uh, that we're testing uh and so yeah the the, the the whole point is to make this game alive you know make it feel alive and so the the players the fans they can they can interact with us uh, that's very important and there's more there's more coming there's more coming yeah yeah <laughs> Of like new things coming um just recently released cecil's nightmare yes. um mode which is pretty cool what's that all about tell us about that so basically cecil's nightmares it's a it's a new gda training program that cecil uh, opened uh and it's different training simulation based on cecil's worst nightmares so literally it's like to to prep your team to get your team ready for any kind of threats that could happen so Cecil, it doesn't sleep, you know, this guy, like at night, he has nightmares. It's like, ah, oh, the flag sands, they're going to come back or the criminals, they're going to go crazy or the guardians of the globe, they're going to turn their back, you know, to me. So basically you're fighting against different types of enemies. And the whole point of this game mode is to, uh, to make you rethink about your strategy. So mm -hmm. some, some training simulation, they're going to say, okay, you're going to fight against criminals, but you can only fight with the opposing faction, you know? Yeah. So the guardians, the guardians of the globe. So that's, you need to rethink, oh, okay, I had this best team, but now I need to find a new best combo to be able to fight mm -hmm. them. So that's the whole point to try to, to be able to face any kind of threats, basically. I love that because it's really yeah. encouraging you to collect all the characters and, and use different teams and not just work on, you know, your core five. You're going to need to branch out because you might not, yeah. you might need criminals for a team and like, oh, all I have are Titan. Like you might need to start getting some other criminals involved yeah. if you're going to need to come up with five of them. Mm -hmm. That's that's a really cool. And it, and it helps, and it helps the, the people, the players that, Ryan, to your point, just use like their core five through every single mission. And it's like, oh, wait, okay, who am I fighting like in the actual game? So mm -hmm. it is a, a mode that rewards, you know, players, but also teaches them to kind of think outside the box so they can get through those actual missions a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. I was to be strategic. Days. I was moving yes. artifacts mm -hmm. from different characters off of my core five because I, oh, I can't use this character. So I'm using this mm -hmm. artifact on them. So it's actually getting us to, you know, do that, which yeah. is, I think, something that was somewhat missing from the game because yeah. I was like, oh, I just had my core five, work on leveling them up. And then everyone else is just, you know, but now that I know, food, I, as you call them, Ryan, food. you call them food, food, yeah, food <laughs> for your, your top players. But now that, but now that you need a lot of different characters and a lot of variety, yeah. that's that's really cool, and also makes us yeah. feel like no one is food. Like you need everyone now. <laughs> exactly, you need you need all of them. You need all the all, all the all the characters, and so yeah, we're really adding like a strategy layer with this uh, feature, and we're adding the first competitive aspect as well. Because there's like uh, the GDA rankings yeah. uh, that we're adding. So like the best score you have, the best rank you get in the leaderboards, and the best reward you get. So exactly. So that's that's a, a social social aspect of the game is is slowly slowly growing. Yes, because then you can kind of between friends or between everyone else see how high mm -hmm. you rank, and there's the they're mm -hmm. being able to compare. And that's that's yes. pretty neat. And that I can say firsthand that that worked because I was looking oh, for your guys' yeah. names on that ranking. I'm like, I just can't be last. As long as I'm <laughs> not last, I'll be yeah. okay. We don't even look at Ryan's. Like Ryan's okay. Ryan's there, obviously, <laughs> yeah. but as long yeah. as I'm above TJ, I don't. I don't care. I just need you're TJ. you're not. You're Which not. You're above. not. I know. I know. I'm not. I know. I'm not. Um, I'll just need to throw more money at it. That's all I need to do. <laughs> Yeah, so I saw I saw your names out there. I saw your names. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so not only did we get Cecil's nightmares, but now we have uh, a folder for seasons. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about Indeed. that? So yeah, we're releasing the three first chapters of season two. So that's a new storyline, new new characters, 
coming in, new enemies, new threats. Uh, and so, yeah, we, the idea is to release bit by bit new chapters. So you have more of the campaign, more of the storyline uh, and so new, literally a new storyline. And we want to try to get more of the feeling of the show, you know, where they have like lots of threats happening and Cecil, you know, like dealing with this type of enemy, like sometimes it's stock seismic, sometimes it's some other heroes that are uh, characters that I will mention. <laughs> so <laughs> I will so say this like, is... season, season two has like that little shadow. And uh, yeah, if I'm, I can imagine who that could be. And if I'm right, that's going to be fucking crazy. Yeah, that's, Can't that's huge. That. Yeah, Which is actually pretty cool, fun yeah. because, again, without getting into any specifics or even uh, spoiling the early stages of the game, finding out there's <laughs> other versions of these characters was like, oh, what is this? What is this? Is this related to a certain character? It's like, no, oh, no, it's 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 related to Mahler stuff. And then another character gets involved. And it's very fun. You guys are having a lot of fun with the story and with the characters yeah. and with the world. Um, yeah. But that's cool. And getting to see a season two means that, you know, more chapters are coming, helps people with their weeklies that are all caught up on the chapters. Mm -hmm. um, so it's getting that more and more is, is always a good thing. Um, yeah. But then sure. the other big thing that came, which was highly requested, uh, especially between us and our alliance, was being able to chat with each other. So it's pretty cool that we now have the chat feature in the alliance. Uh, so when TJ is hogging a slot, I could say, TJ, get Rexplode out of there. Uh, I'm putting another <laughs> invisible in, uh, no. but, or, or, or especially if there's certain, you know, being able to ask, uh, you know, what, uh, uh, artifacts are, you know, being used or teaming up to have a certain bonus between, because we're all using the same, you know, mm -hmm. type of character. All mm -hmm. that is pretty cool. So yeah. it's nice. It's, I mean, we are friends like, and we can just text each other. Like one time Ryan very passively aggressively asked me. So, Bill, like, are you going to, like, upgrade your Omni-Man? Like, how many stars are you going to get <laughs> on him? And I was like, order? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wow, okay, that was pretty rude, but I'll try. Um, but for those people who just join random alliances, like, it's a really That's... nice feature for them to be able to communicate with one another and do what everything that Ryan said if you don't have the ability to text them or call them passively <laughs> aggressively. <so. laughs> Yeah, that's that's an important addition. That's something yeah. that uh, that we're looking forward to, uh, to to getting into the game. Uh, yeah, it's gonna make it's gonna make it very easy now uh, for players to, to to communicate together and organize better. And again, like like I said, for the leaderboard system that we have in the CISO's nightmares, yeah. uh, the social aspect is very important. It's always difficult as well to to build this uh, this social aspect of the game. But the chat is another way to do it, and uh, we have plenty of ideas. To also to 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 make it grow, uh, to 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 improve the alliances, the chat yeah. is just the start. Very cool. No boy. Awesome. Do you have uh? Do you have any particular favorite character or ability within the game? Not the show or the comics or anything, but like in the game, are there certain characters or abilities that really stick out to you? Because I have to mention Damien Darkblood just because he has a cool first name, obviously. It's, yes, yeah. That is I, I, was meant, I, I was meant to work on Invincible. <laughs> uh, no, but like my real favorite character is Robot. Yeah. Uh, I love him in the show, in the comic, because he's a complex character, you know, and he's amazing. But in the game, I think we did a great job at getting his personality visually as well. Like, he looks super cool. Uh, and his ability, the main ability, like how he, like, he, he unleashes this green ball of energy to support the team is very important because we don't have many support characters yet. And it's really here, you know, like to heal your team. Uh, like I said earlier, like one of his passives is like those rockets, you know, that are, that are flying through the battlefield. Uh, I really like him and is 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 a great asset to any team. Maybe not anymore with Cecil's Nightmares because you need to rethink a bit about your, mm -hmm. your team composition. But uh, yeah, I love this character a lot. Visually, it looks cool. Yeah. His abilities are very powerful and visually impressive. Uh, it's I would choose that one. Yeah, he's also been one of my favorites as well. Even the way a lot of them, uh, like seeing Battle Beast obviously has been great. The way he takes his mace off his back and even the, the, the way he uh, enters a fight, you know, coming mm -hmm. through the door that he goes through in the show. Like the subtle yeah. details like that have, have been a lot of fun. And of course, Aquarius, you know, he just looks cool. Yes. Anytime you're fighting against him and he's got water jets going off mm -hmm. all over the place, mm -hmm. it's just a cool effect. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think... love, I, love, I love what we did. Sorry, sorry. Man. No, no. I, no. Love, 
I love what we did with Akris as well, because uh, he's not, you know, he's not that of a famous character, I would say, I guess. But in the game, he looks great. Like whenever you see him fight, like you said, it's like, whoa, a lot of things are happening. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, to flip it, one of my least favorite characters to fight is Isotope, because I can't tell you how many times I've lost a, a fucking battle by that much because he teleported me back, and I'm like, God damn it! Like, <laughs> stop! Like, so in my top, in my top five, my my highest ranked is Rex. My second highest ranked is Aquarius, and then I also have um, a epic orange, you know, uh, Isotope. My problem with that is that they're all um, they're all range characters. So I'm trying to uh, upgrade my battle beast to kind of get Isotope out of my top five, so that I can have three mm. melee and two uh, two um, range, which is is it's a cool thing. Like we've talked about before, you have to be strategic and you have to like mm. move characters around and and think about those type of things. Um, so yeah. That's cool that you have that ver uh, you know diversity though, especially when it comes to the Cecil Nightmares things. Like I know there are certain cases where ranged ranged enemy or ranged heroes are going to be really helpful, um, um, and so yeah, that that's pretty neat. And I think one of the things that I love about the game so much is all the stuff that we were just talking about fits like in my head canon of what it must be like to be cecil you know like it it fits so well in the story of like okay i've got these heroes and they'd be best for this situation and i should send these ones on this op and it's just cool how much this sort of gameplay style mm -hmm. fits the narrative of the world like you guys have done a great job fitting that into an, an invincible you know scene really yeah so that was that was one of the pillar of the game like really when we uh when we started to work on it we we really wanted the player to do what you see Cecil do in the yeah, show. Yeah. You, know? you you're really in his shoes. Obviously, you're not Cecil. You you work as a GDA agent, but you work very closely with him, with Donald, yeah. and that's your job. That's your day to day job. You have like all these powerful heroes. Uh, you need you need to find the best way to use them. Who am I going to send on a mission? Am I going to send the team team? Am I going to send the Guardians of the Globe? A mix. Uh, that's 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 very that that's the whole point of this game basically. Yeah, and, uh, I think so. I think as it works well. as game director, are there any tips or tricks that are kind of lesser known or people kind of glaze over that you can give us to kind of help us out a little bit? Honestly, the best tips and tricks on in the community is giving them. It's crazy. Like uh, I'm super impressed. That's why I love. That's why I love about making video games. Is that the the community, the fans, they end up knowing your game better than you. Yeah, like. <laughs> That better than the developers so they have like amazing tips there and I, we saw like graphics that they made to like you know to rank the best heroes rank the best that artifacts. was great i, I love know, that so like top tier yeah. and who to group with who why you shared that with hey. us and i'm like no shit, yeah this is great. it's amazing yeah i i don't use discord that much but i had obviously heard us all talk about how there was a the discord for the game and how a lot of yeah. people were sharing things on there and as soon as i went there and saw there was like an infographic section i'm like screenshot 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 <laughs> I'm like saving all of these and like reorganizing my whole team based on it it is really cool how much it's, the community it's engages in it and and creates things for it yeah yeah the super active and there's even I don't know if you saw that one. They even made a design of Debbie. No, oh, wow. cool. oh, they made they made no. a design of Debbie, so Debbie could be a playable character. And one That's of her, amazing. one of her ability is to throw a bottle of wine to oh my god, yes. to confuse oh, the enemy. Cool. It makes we sense. We gotta have like hitting with the duck too. Like I feel like we can. Oh, the duck. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's great. That's great. But just to go back <laughs> to not to not avoid the question. Sorry uh, about tips. Uh, for me, I think a lot of players tend to forget about gear and artifacts. You know, like they actually like many times I unlocked myself in the campaign, for example, by by simply like like you said earlier, Ryan, just like, oh, I'm gonna put a burger mouth burger on this character, like a defender, like character no monster girl, monster girl, for example, because that works better. Like any artifact related to HP or defense, put them on defenders. That's gonna buff them quite a lot. Uh, that helps. For attackers, for example, uh, you could use uh the Guardians of the Globe bracelet that works very well on Invincible Omni Man. So play play around with the artifacts that can <laughs> that can make that can make a big difference. Very good tip for the for the Cecil's Nightmares uh, mode as well. Nice, nice, good to know. <laughs> so don't set it and forget it. Always change up your strategy, pretty much. Like right? if you if you That's, hit a wall, yeah. don't just be like, oh, I can't do it. 
try exactly. it, try something else. Yeah, yeah. Play around with the gear. Play around with the artifacts uh, that can that can that can help. But play around as well synergies between heroes. You know, like for example, Invincible and Atomy when they fight together, they give each other a bonus. Uh, don't forget that as well. Uh, that's because I guess a lot of players they tend to look at the main ability, but synergies are very important. So okay. if you have like the characters of the same faction and all that, that helps a lot as well. Okay. Awesome. And then one other question that I always had thinking about, uh, especially knowing the the future of the show and the comic and everything, is it possible? And, it, you know, I'm not looking for a, a, a final say on anything. Is it possible that you'd ever have other versions of characters, whether it be an elite version of Rex, for example, or, mm-hmm. or a way to upgrade Rex to get a fourth ability or a different version of Invincible or different outfits or anything like that. Is there ever, is that something that has been talked about at all? Yeah, yeah, okay. of course, of course. Like, yeah, any, like I said earlier, any characters, alternate characters that you see in the show, yeah, that means that some, at some point they might appear in the game. Very but that's, yeah, that, that's a very important part for us as well, like to, what are we going to do with altered characters? That's 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 a, a tricky question we have in mind. We saw as well some feedback uh, in Discord, ready to know. Yeah, uh, that's some, that's some, that's something we we talking about. And you just again mentioned the you know the Discord or Reddit or wherever. And I mean, it's really great that you guys are listening to players and encouraging infographics and like mm-hmm. listening to the community when it comes to this kind of game because you want it to be a live game and a game that can't live without listening and getting that feedback and adjusting and everything. So good on you guys for listening to the community and adjusting things and trying to tweak things and make this game that as fun as it can be for all of us. So great job with that. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. On the, like, honestly, every day we look at it, uh, like, like, like I said, we get valuable feedback to improve the game, to tweak it. But again, like this game, we make it for you guys. We make it for the fans. So we want to make sure that it's a proper invincible game, this kind of game that you, that you want to play, that you expect. So even like ideas for features, uh, for new heroes, uh, we note it down. I note everything down, believe cool. me. I have I have everything on paper. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Well, is there anything else you want to get out before, um, before we wrap this up? The new update should uh, be live now for everybody. Yes. Yes, the new update is live, so go ahead, enjoy it. Like I said, share, share feedback wherever, even in this video, in the comments, uh, yeah. we will look at it. That's important. So have fun, go play it, go download it. If you haven't played, Google Store, App Store, Amazon Store. Uh, also, I want to thank, so I want to thank the whole community because, like I said, it's very important for us that you react to what we do. We, we, we do this game for you, so we want you to enjoy it. I want to thank as well the whole team that is working on this game because they put a lot of work. They're very passionate people. We're all passionate people. We love to work with Invincible. It's just so fun. It's so much fun for us, but still a lot of work. And we, the whole team is really trying the best at delivering the best experience for, for the fans. And obviously, thanks to you guys. Super happy uh, to be here. Thanks uh, for giving me the opportunity to be the voice of the Guardian of the Globe team. Yeah. Uh, it's, always, it's always a pleasure. Oh, thank you for coming on. And it's yeah, been a lot of fun. You. And like Damien yeah. said, leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you think of the game. And let us know what you want to see changed or who you want to see added. Um, we know he writes it all down now. So we'll see you around. You. Bye now. Great. Bye. Ciao. See you, bye. are going to be chatting with Damien Chevrolet. I'm going to do it again. It's not Chevrolet. I just want to say Chevrolet. Chevrolet? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Chevrolet. Yeah. Chevalier. 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 Cheval or Cheval? Cheval. Cheval. Chevalier. 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 You can do it. You're going to nail it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you gotta give me a minute. Uh, <laughs> <You gotta> Chevrolet. <laughs> Bull's gotta calm down. Uh, <laughs>